Hello viewers, I'm Jordan Golson and this is the Ram TRX, a 700 horsepower pickup truck. And real quick, before we get started, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, I'd really appreciate it. Well, first off, it really goes. 700 horsepower from a 6.2 liter V8 engine with an enormous supercharger on top. You may know it as the Hellcat, and they have put it into this wonderful pickup truck because uh, Dodge and Ram are basically putting it in everything. It's in the Challenger, it's in the Charger, it's in the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and now it's here. So what happens when you put a 700 horsepower engine in an enormous pickup truck? Well, it makes it crazy fast. If you put your foot down in this, it takes off, and it doesn't matter that this thing weighs like 7,000 pounds or something. I mean, I don't think it's that much, but it's not far off. But zero to 60 in like four and a half seconds or something, which is just mind-boggling for a truck like this. Okay, it's fast. There are other trucks that are fast, the Ford Raptor being the most obvious candidate for competition with this thing, because this has a Baja mode, just like the Ford Raptor does. But most people aren't gonna take it to Baja anyway. They're going to drive it in traffic, which is why I'm here right now. So it's got a whole bunch of upgraded components, engine, suspension, tires, wheels, but the biggest upgrade of all is to the sound. So if I put my foot down, a supercharger whine, what a supercharger does is it takes power off of the engine and uses that to spin a little fan and that fan shoves air into the engine and that creates more power. So you're taking a little bit of engine power and using it to create a lot more. A turbocharger, on the other hand, uses exhaust gas to spin a fan. So gas that's coming out of the engine uses that to force air in. And so, you know, it works a little differently. You hear that? Compared to the Hellcat that's in the Charger, this one is much louder. You can actually hear it a lot better. You can hear the whine a lot better. And the exhaust is actually a bit quieter because I assume because it's so far back. Now it's not exactly quiet because if you go outside the vehicle, it's super loud there as well. So it's just a little different, but the fun of it is still there. And this engine is maximum fun. And I joked with the Charger that the right pedal, the throttle, was a dopamine injector for your brain. You press that, it makes lots of noise and sound and fury, and then you get happy. And it works here as well. I drove the new Raptor earlier this year and I did a review of it and I will put a link to that in the description below because I did it on my friend Tim's site on Pickup Truck Talk. But the biggest change to that this year was to the suspension. They went to a five link rear suspension, which in addition to making it better off-road also improves the ride comfort on-road. And one of the things that people said was, oh, because Ram came out with the TRX, Ford needed to step up their game because this truck came out a couple years ago and so Ford had to make updates. And I see what they mean with that because this truck is quite comfortable on the road. You know, a lot of trucks have uh, a much firmer suspension, leaf suspension in the back. This doesn't have that. And so driving down the road, it's not firm, but it's not soft either. And you can actually go in and press this TRX button that shows all kinds of different modes. And so you got a suspension mode, you got steering, transmission, all that. Everything's in street right now, but I can tap and put the suspension into sport and that makes it much firmer. I immediately felt a change. Or I can tap Baja and it makes it all flobbery. And so that makes it even more comfortable on the road, but does reduce your control by a little bit. And that's just the trade-off of a sport suspension versus uh, something a little more floaty put it in Baja, kind of feels like an old school Cadillac in here. So you can go into different drive modes, auto, which is just sort of the regular one, snow, that makes sense, tow, sport, gets everything much more aggressive and sets it up for the street. And then you got some off-road stuff, mud, sand, rock, and then Baja, and Baja sets it up for like high-speed desert running. You want to go ride over a bunch of whoops, put it in Baja mode. Now I'm in San Diego, there's plenty of people around here who do go off into the wilderness and do it. But if you go north a little bit, you end up in OC. There's lots of these trucks that never explore off the pavement. 
And that's fine because it is a status truck. And so what does it say about your status? Well, in here, Ram has always had really nice interiors, right? So you got this huge big center screen. You have uh, wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. That's great. You've got some buttons over here. It's okay, that changes the, the temperature. That's a little annoying. I wish it was a knob. Um, and you do not have hard buttons for the heated seats, which is a little annoying. You have to tap comfort right here and then it opens up and you've got buttons there for the heated and ventilated seats um, and for uh, the heated steering wheel. It does have this enormous center screen that shows all kinds of things on the dash. Trip info, I've gone 250 miles, average miles per gallon, 10.6, that's pretty terrible. There's a little indicator on the right that shows your range counting down in real time and you can just, it sort of spins like a, you know, oh, 52, 51, it just keeps going. And it does have my three things all right here. Distance to empty, outside temperature, digital speed. All of them right there, perfect. That's exactly what I want. Thank you very much, Ram. And then you have the performance pages here. Those are pretty cool. It can record drag time. So if you go to the drag, uh, drag strip, it'll record your reaction time. It'll record your uh, quarter mile speed, things like that. That's pretty cool. And then it'll also record your um, most recent and best uh, zero to 60 times and zero to 100 times and brake distance and things like that. And then of course you have a g-force meter. So right now my front peak g-force is 0.65 g's. So you got a g-force meter. You got to have that if you're going to be, uh, you know, using a performance car. So you get, you know, g's in different directions and whatever. And then for an off-road vehicle, it does have uh, active current pitch and roll meters. And then if you tap vehicle dynamics, it will measure your steering angle. This is like an off-road friendly one. It tells you whether the rear, rear axle is locked or not, and whether the transfer case is in four high or four low. And so then you have buttons here. Right now we're in four auto. And then you have four wheel low. Then there's a launch control button. And so if you press that, it tells you to apply brake pressure, how much pressure to apply, apply full throttle. And then when it tells you, you let go, and you take off. And we are not going to try that out because we're, you know, here in the middle of the city. So that's all really cool stuff. And I like this interior. I like the volume knob. That's really cool. Down here, you do have the uh, trailer brake control, which is sort of a nice placement for it. And then uh, an assist for trailer steering to help you when you're backing up and it'll steer around and stuff. Um, so you can back up a trailer much easier just by using this little knob. That's pretty cool. You have some aux buttons in here that are preset. And so you can hook up uh, lights or a winch or, or things like that. Um, and then you got the buttons to turn the parking sensors on and off. If you're going off-roading, you want that because sometimes you're like climbing up a rock and you don't want the sensors to go off because that's annoying. Down here in the middle, you have a ton of USB ports. You have two USB-C and two USB-A and an aux in and a little storage cubby. And there's a place to put two phones with two wireless chargers. Then you got uh, some cup holders, big gear knob, another bin, and then this enormous thing to store like everything. And then it's actually got two levels to it. So that's pretty cool too. And you can, you know, fit like file folders and stuff in it because this is just a regular Ram 1500 on the interior with some TRX little upgrades. And that is true for the steering wheel as well, which has normal like adaptive cruise and things, but it's got big flappy paddles. So you can change the gears because you gotta be able to do that. One of my favorite things is the start stop button, which here is red, whereas in a regular Ram 1500, it would be black. And so you look at that and you press that to turn it on and it sort of reminds you, hey, you're driving something kind of special here. Now the elephant, or should I say the enormous T-Rex in the room is the price. This one specced out to $91,000. So it is a very high-end truck. It's got all the accoutrements on it, right? It's got, uh, you know, adaptive cruise and it's got all the safety stuff and heated seats. And it actually has these comfy uh, sport seats that are exclusive to the T-Rex. And all that is great. It's just an awful lot of money, but that's who this is aimed at is, you know, if you were buying a Hellcat, charger that starts is 70 whatever thousand dollars and then you can option that up into the 80s pretty easily and so this is just you know a truck costs more than a car because it can do lots of things and you know this is the same deal is it worth it honestly if you need me to answer that question before you decide to buy it no it is not um, if you want a truck with 700 horsepower that's super loud and has a supercharger wine and all that great stuff then yeah it is worth it because there's nothing else on the market like this yet
So Ford's been making the Raptor for more than a decade now and didn't really have any challengers in the high performance truck market. And then Ram came along with the T-Rex. Yeah, this guy has tons of power. I hear from people who would know that this does not have the off-road chops that the Raptor does. And I'm going to trust them on that because I am not an expert in those things. But it does have lots of power and it can go in one direction, straight, at very high speeds and make a ton of noise and spectacle while it does it. That's pretty cool. You know, a lot of people are gonna buy this for that. People buy the Raptor and never drive it off-road, so all that's pretty normal. Ford has to respond, right? You can't let your rival have more power than you. That's unacceptable, especially in the pickup truck wars. And so this has 700 horsepower and a big V8, whereas the regular Raptor has 450 horsepower from a turbocharged V6. Ford is going to come out with the Ford Raptor R, which has an enormous V8 engine likely pulled out of the Ford Mustang GT500, the Predator engine, which is an enormous V8, making more than 700 horsepower. We don't know exactly how much the Ford one, uh, the Raptor R will make, but I would assume whatever it is, it's more than the 702 horsepower that is in the T-Rex. On the exterior, you do have a bunch of like little changes, but it's just a regular Ram. You got some hood scoopy stuff and it's a regular truck. So just like the Raptor, you can daily drive it. You can use it every day. You can haul stuff in it. The only thing that's not excellent is the fuel economy, which is absolutely horrific. I've had this for a week and I've put some number of miles on it, almost an entire tank, 10.7 miles per gallon. I think I've only put 200 and something miles on this truck and it's almost out of fuel. This has about the same range as we think the Ford F-150 Lightning, the electric pickup truck is going to have. So if you're worried about range anxiety, do not buy this. But of course, if you're buying this, you're not worried about range. You're not worried about fuel economy. You just wanna know how much power it has and how fast it's gonna go and how much noise it's gonna make while it does it. And how do you sum up the TRX? It's lots of everything. Lots of power, lots of performance, lots of money, and lots of looks and jealous glances from people who know what it is you're driving and wish they were driving it instead. I'm gonna be sad to give this back. There aren't many vehicles that I really say, God, I wish I could keep that because I drive more than 100 cars a year, lots of different vehicles, and you're just cycling from one into the next and it's like, oh, what are you driving next? Like the car that's gonna replace this is a Subaru Legacy, which is a very nice car in and of itself, but this is much more special and much more exciting and it's got a sense of occasion to it. And that's what buying this or the Raptor is all about. You get into it and you feel um, behind the wheel of something special. And this, especially with the Hellcat engine that's underneath and the history that that has, a little bit of backstory on that. It was developed in secret at Dodge's SRT division and they didn't tell the higher ups that they were doing it. They were just quietly working. It's a refinement of the 6.4 liter V8 that they already used in a ton of other cars. And you'd think 450 horsepower would be good enough for anybody, but no, they said, we wanna build a 700 horsepower. So they did and they got it mostly done before they started showing um, the higher ups and they were like, you know, we could just put this in the Challenger and put it on sale. That's exactly what they did. And people went bananas for it because a 707 horsepower, that's how much it had when the Challenger, when it came out in the Challenger, was a bonkers amount of horsepower that only supercars had. And it still has more horsepower than most supercars. You buy a Lamborghini Huracan, it doesn't have 700 horsepower. And so you could say to your supercar owning friends, I've got more horsepower in my car than you have in yours. And you only paid $70,000 for it affordable power, it was awesome. That's what the whole muscle car thing was about. And it's the muscle car, the ultimate muscle car engine just before we're all about to do the switch over to electric cars. The Rivian R1T pickup has more horsepower than this from its four electric motors. And it's quite a bit faster too. And curiously about the same price, actually it's a little bit cheaper. And so in many ways, the T-Rex is a bit of a swan song for the internal combustion engine. The Hellcat engine, they're not gonna make another version of that. It just is what it is. And they've pushed it about as far as they can go. And all the development now is gonna be on electrics. Like Hyundai just shut down their entire internal combustion engine R&D division. If this is the way the internal combustion engine, the big V8 is going out, pretty good way to do it. I like this thing. I like the T-Rex. I would have one in my garage, but maybe I'll like the Raptor R better. We'll have to try it out. If you want to comment, 
Tell me how wrong I am about something. Leave a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. Drop a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed it and click the notification bell so you can get notified of new videos when they come out. Other than that, have a great day. Drive safely.